My name is Rich Whitney. I live in Glen Ellen, Illinois, and I am a solar ambassador for the ISEA. Hello. I had solar panels installed on my house in April 2010. In 2009, I considered installing a solar system, but I was unable to find an installer. The next year, I was able to get some quotes, and I selected an experienced company to do the design and installation. The system is rated at 3.7 kilowatts. Over the course of a year, the system generates about 4,000 kilowatt hours. Today's solar panels are more efficient than they were when I bought mine, so a new system that is rated the same as mine would actually be able to produce more electricity. When I was contemplating going solar, I did all the cost payback calculations and decided that even with a 30% federal tax credit and 30% state rebate, that the amount I would pay would take too long to pay back and therefore not make sense financially. However, my wife and I believe that the world was heading in a dangerous direction climate-wise, and if we could do something to reduce our carbon footprint, we would do so to the best of our ability. So we took the solar plunge. As it turned out, the system has probably paid for itself, or it's very close. Also, at the time it was installed, I did not assume that my solar system would add to the resale value of my home, but today I'm certain that it will. Let's take a look at the solar panels. We are looking at the solar panels from the roof of my house. There are 16 230 watt panels. You can see they're arranged around two skylights. The roof faces south and slightly east. At the time these panels were installed, shadows that fell on any panel decreased the energy production of the entire system. Now panels are made so that each individual panel can produce at full capacity even if another panel is shaded and producing at a lower capacity. So at the time these panels were installed, we were concerned about potential shadows. The chimney at the far end of the roof, which is the east end, can cast a shadow on the panels, but that happens only a couple of months of the year and only for a brief time in the early morning when not much electricity is being produced anyway because of the angle of the sun. There are trees on the west side of the house that at the time the panels were installed were not tall enough to cast a shadow on the roof. Now, years have gone by and they are tall enough, but their shadows don't reach as far as the panels, at least not until late in the day. The trees directly to the south of the building were all short when the panels were installed and since then two have died. The one that is remaining should not be a concern for another 15 years or so. Anyone installing panels now does not have the same limitations regarding shade as I did. If I were to install panels today, I would have the panels cover more of my roof area and not worry about the impact of temporary shadows. Regarding shade, all panels, both old and new, are affected by snow cover. It takes just a little snow to greatly reduce energy production. However, Unless the snow is heavy, it usually melts off within a day or two. In fact, with a south-facing exposure, snow melts off the solar panels faster than it melts off the roof. We get electricity from these panels 365 days a year. Even when it's cloudy, and even on the shortest days of the year when the sun is at its lowest. Some people used to say solar panels would detract from the appearance of the house. These panels, since they lie at the same angle as the roof, are barely noticeable from the ground. It's funny how society's tastes change. Today, solar panels are a desirable feature to have on a house. I believe that you can expect the selling price of your house to increase by as much or more than what your solar panels cost you after rebates. This is the inverter for the solar panels. There is a pipe that runs from here up the side of my house to the roof and connects to the panel array. The inverter changes the direct current output of the panels to alternating current, which is used by electric devices that plug into the home's outlets. The inverter connects to the breaker panel to service the electric needs of the house. A connection is also made to the electric utility to provide a backflow to the grid of excess electricity 
that the home is not able to use. If there is an area-wide power outage while the panels are producing electricity, the entire solar system is automatically shut down. This is for the safety of workers that come to work on the outage. You don't want them to get zapped by your solar system. Here's the pipe that comes down from the roof to the inverter, which is on the other side of this wall. There's two manual shutoffs, one to disconnect the solar panels, the other to disconnect the system from the grid. These would only be used when system maintenance has to be performed. This is a smart meter that records how much electricity comes in from the grid as well as how much electricity flows back to the grid when the solar panels are producing more electricity than the house can use. The monthly measurements for to and from the grid are shown on the monthly electric bill. The two figures are netted out and I receive a credit in kilowatt hours for the amount of electricity that flows to the grid that exceeds the amount that comes from the grid. This credit is added to the previous month's credit and the new total rolls over to the next month. If the amount that comes from the grid exceeds the amount to the grid in any month, the rollover amount is reduced accordingly. When the rollover amount is not enough to cover the net amount of kilowatt hours that I use, I have to pay for the electricity. This normally happens only two or three times of the year. Once a year, with the bill due in April, the rollover credits are zeroed out and a new 12-month period begins. That's how the net metering agreement with the utility works. Well, that's my solar story. If I were to install a system today, I would fill more of my roof with panels, at least 25% more area than currently. Even though a larger system would generate more electricity than I presently require, I foresee a chance of electric cars in my future and thus a need for additional electricity. Prices of solar panels have come down over the years while efficiency has increased. New systems are financially easier to justify and are becoming a desirable selling feature for a home. And climate change is real. I encourage you, if you are considering it, go ahead, take the solar plunge.